Well, it's time for another book review. And this time we have U.S. Nuclear Weapons by Chuck Hansen. And this was originally published in 1988. And fascinating book, just a overall the subject matter is, is pretty straightforward. A lot of good uh, uh, kind of behind the scenes photos, as it were, of the U.S. nuclear program and a lot of the uh, pictures of different nuclear shots and uh, just lots of fascinating information about the U.S. nuclear arsenal up to uh, the year 1988. And uh, the main reason I thought about this today was uh, this book was actually recommended to me by uh, a gentleman I go to church with. There's actually a couple of different guys that I go to church with that uh, uh, work at Pantex or are retired from Pantex. And Pantex, of course, being the nuclear facility just up the road from me that uh, builds nuclear weapons. And uh, uh, and it, it's kind of funny. They actually did a background check on yours truly because of a joke that I made on Facebook uh, where I saw a really cool cloud formation and I said, not a negligent discharge at Pantex, just a cool cloud formation. And uh, evidently they got people that scour the internet for mentions of Pantex and uh, I got the special treatment. So, uh, but uh, fascinating thing about this is just, again, it's a catalog of the nuclear arsenal but uh, the guy at church that told me about this, the reason this came up, the reason I went and got this was he mentioned that actually some classified material had made it into this book kind of by accident. And as a result, it is a fairly hard to find book because of that classified material. And he would not go into detail uh, on the record as to what that classified material was, but uh, I thought, well, that definitely needs to be part of my collection. And also, my dad, when he was in the Navy in the early 60s, flew in a uh, P2V uh, patrol plane over the South China Sea, I think that's right. And uh, their kind of get out of jail free card in uh, when they were patrolling, looking for uh, radar sites and looking for submarines uh, was a nuclear, I think it was a 20 kiloton nuclear depth charge. So, um, and I'm pretty sure, I think I've looked that up in here, but it's, like I said, I've had this book for uh, a little over a year now, so I, I can't remember if I've looked that up or not. But um, fascinating though, if you're uh, like me, I'm a child of the Cold War. I grew up with all the nuclear scares and all the stuff about nuclear um, technology and uh, all the crazy bomb technology around that uh, everybody was worried was going to in the world back then. And 40 years later, we're right back where we started. Um, but another fascinating thing about, so I know in, the, in this channel, I uh, know there's some of you who've recommended books to me and I have one of those books that I have yet to review. I'll get to that another time, but about the veracity of the claims of nuclear weapons. Are there even nuclear weapons? Is that a thing or not? And uh, so there's a, and I can't think of the title of the book right now. I'll, I'll, if I remember it, I'll put it in the video description. But uh, it's uh, it's about that the nuclear weapons are in fact a hoax and there hasn't been, um, nuclear technology has not advanced to the point that uh, Uncle Sam claims it has. And I find myself a little bit more on the other side of that of, I think, not only have nuclear weapons advanced farther than we have been told, I'm inclined to believe that nuclear weapons have probably been deployed tactically in ways that would surprise us. So um, I don't have any uh, verification of that. That's just my personal theory. Um, no one has told me anything or anything like that. But uh, which brings me back to my friend that mentioned this book and told me about it. Um, in talking about this book and talking about the U.S. nuclear program, um, I asked him if he had ever heard of the NUMEC fiasco, or sometimes referred to as the Apollo affair. And he had not. And I brought it up to him, and he seemed uh, surprisingly uncurious about that event of history. And it 
shocked me because those of you following this channel are probably aware of that. If you're not, I'll give you a quick breakdown. The New Mac fiasco was when a, a company out of Apollo, Pennsylvania, I believe, is uh, called New Mac. And it's a uh, short and like new, nuclear materials something, I forget the exact what it all stands for, but uh, but it was a company back in the, uh, I believe back in the 60s into the early 70s, was responsible for recycling nuclear materials, plutonium especially, from uh, nuclear sites and taking leftover material after, after nu the nuclear program was done with this material and recycling that and um, taking that back and reprocessing it. I don't know all the ins and outs of that. But interestingly enough, Numec, this company, this private company that was responsible for transporting this nuclear material, um, was losing a lot of nuclear material, a lot of plutonium, weapons-grade plutonium. And uh, finally, uh, they were audited, and uh, when they were when when they were audited, the the government realized that hey, wait a second, these guys are because they had to pay fines whenever they lost nuclear material, they were paying fines. And they said these guys are losing so much and paying so much in fines. There's no way they can this is possible. Like they couldn't be in business paying these fines. So um, I, I believe, and this is one, you'll definitely have to look this up um, and uh, verify this, but I believe the owner of Numec then fled to Israel. And it turned out that Numec had in fact been uh, diverting, stealing, is how most of us would call it, was stealing uh, plutonium from the United States to start their illegal nuclear program. And I found it really interesting that as high security and all the background checks and everything they do on guys that work at Pantex, I was shocked that this guy in his capacity at Pantex had never heard of the Numec fiasco. And because I've said the word Pantex multiple times in this video, I'm pretty sure by now the uh, the good people Pantex have, have joined the chat. So Pantex, uh, just, just so you know, I personally think that everybody in your staff should have a thorough understanding of the Numec fiasco or the Apollo affair. And that's Numec, N-U-M-E-C. Uh, look it up, just Google Numec fiasco or Apollo affair and you'll find it. But to the Pantex people that are, are no doubt watching this now, um, I, I think that that should definitely... It, that should be like baseline knowledge for all employees working in any kind of nuclear capacity to understand that a, um, uh, a foreign nation used a private company to steal weapons grade plutonium to start an illegal nuclear program. That would be something I would have all my employees on high alert to be watching for that and make sure that that sort of thing never happens again. And I find it highly, highly troubling that this gentleman that I was talking to about this, that in uh, in spite of his uh, role in the company and was definitely in a capacity where he should have known, had never heard of this before. So again, Pantex, you do better. So you just got red pilled. You can go look that up and uh, uh, act accordingly. But in my opinion, if a foreign nation, and I don't care if that foreign nation is, you know, Brazil or Germany or Israel or I don't care who it is, but if if somebody is stealing nuclear material to make illegal nuclear weapons, that should be shut down at its source, and that should become common knowledge to a point that that can't happen again. So. Uh, and I won't even get into the uh, Israeli art students uh, scandal from the early like 2000s. But uh, uh, anyway, so I thought about that book today. Um, I was thinking about some of the classified stuff in this, and I was trying to remember if this gentleman had told me any particulars of that. But uh, anyway, if you're curious about the U.S. nuclear program and you want to just read through... Um, you know, a catalog of nuclear weapons. Great reference material because this is one of those that a lot of times people will see my library and go, have you read all of these books? And this is definitely not the kind of book you're just going to sit down and read cover to cover. This is more backup reference material. When I'm reading something else and they cite a specific weapon or something, 
now I have a way to look that up. So still, it is fascinating reading in chunks, but this is definitely not the kind of book and be like reading an encyclopedia. But I did, as I was getting ready to make this video, I did see that they had a section in here on, which also, which is one of the reasons I thought about the whole uh, Numec fiasco, was uh, in uh, the first section, they have a section on boosted fission principles on page 25. And I found that interesting because um, the author Stephen Green in, I, I believe it's Living by the Sword, his second book about Israel, refers to Israel having used said stolen plutonium to make boosted nuclear weapons and miniaturized, specifically miniaturized boosted nuclear weapons and that they most likely tested one of these in uh, the South Atlantic along with South Africa. So um, fascinating nuclear history. But uh, uh, anyway, that is Chuck Hansen's U.S. Nuclear Weapons from 1988. And it would be interesting to see what uh, an updated... I do have a couple of other books on U.S. nuclear weapons, and I'd be curious to see if any of those are more recent than this and include anything else or or what. But uh, if I do happen to stumble into this gentleman again and he tells me uh, what the exact uh, classified stuff is, um, he's retired now, so I guess he can speak a little more freely. Uh, we were actually on a, a trip together and he was pointing out some uh you know, nuclear sites. And, uh, and I said, are you okay with me quoting you about that on social media? And, uh, and he said, yeah. So, uh, so here we are. But anyway, uh, so there you go. U.S. Nuclear Weapons by Chuck Hansen from 1988. And don't forget to Google the Numec fiasco. And I'm talking to you, Pantex.